Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I have a small improvement for you that I've been wanting to make for a little while and I just wanted to show you. So we are here already in VR. Now if I click a button, now I have the axe. And if I click the button again, I have the hammer, the pickaxe and the sword. And then back to the regular hands. So you can see the axe, hammer, pickaxe and the sword. Cool. So let's look at how this is set up. First at the top level we have the player and here the only changes is that we have a new input here that's gonna be cycling the tools. Basically what you saw when pushing the switch tools input, we're cycling through the tools on the right hand. And then although it's not set up yet, we actually have the tools on both hands. So you can see here on the left, we have the left hand controller, and that one has the regular distance grab hand that we've been using in the past, and also this fixed hand that has all the different tools, the axe, the hammer, pickaxe, and sword. If I show them here, you can see them. I have the sword, the pickaxe, the hammer, and the axe. Cool. So the hand controller has a few items here. We have a reference to the fixed hand, which is simply a hand that's not animated, so it's always having the same pose. We have a reference to the distance grab hand as a dy dynamic hand. This one has a regular grab actions and you can point with it all the regular hand actions and then we have an array of tools here we have the axe the hammer the pickaxe and the sword all reference here so let's quickly look into the script the script is super simple as well we have these uh, references that i mentioned the fixed hand the dynamic hand and the tools array and then we have a reference to a private index here that we're using to keep track of which which tool is enabled so in the beginning we set the index to zero and then we call enable dynamic hand. This is simply a method that sets a dynamic hand reference to active true and then the fixed hands, the fixed hand reference to active false. And then we have another helper method here that's called enable tool. This one does the opposite. It sets the dynamic hand to active false and it sets the fixed hand to active true. It also goes through the tools array and checks for the tool index and whatever tool index that we pass, it sets that to active true and everything else to active false. We do this simply by checking whether the current tool that we're looking at matches the tool index that we passed. And then we have the method that you saw that's hooked up to the input. This is the cycle tools method. This one first increases the tool index because we're checking for the next tool. And then we check the modulus of that versus the tool length plus one. We increase this by one because when the tool index is zero, we're using that as a reference to the dynamic hand which is not part of the original array. So we reserve this zero index for the dynamic hand. Anything else, and we pass that to the enable tool, subtracting the, the one that we added before. And that's really it. You can see here again, just quickly going through the inputs here, we start with the dynamic hands, which work as regular, and then we can switch tools to the ax, hammer, the pickaxe, and the sword. And these are all set up to work the same as before. So for example, if we put down a pine here, you can still go and hit the pine with a sword and that still cuts down the pine. For now, every tool damages a tree, but you can see that they have different levels of damage here. Now the hammer took forever to actually kill the tree. That is just a side effect of the damager script that we were using before. We have here for every tool has a damager script and they have their own damager scriptable object. So for example, the hammer here does a base damage of 5, while the axe does 10, the pickaxe does 8, and the sword does 15. So you can see that with this we can change how the damage gets applied. Additionally, one thing that we're still missing is having the damageables have a notion of an appropriate tool. So we could add something to the pine to understand that when the axe makes damage, it should take regular damage, but when we're hitting it with the pickaxe or with the hammer, then maybe it should take half damage or, you know, maybe not even, not any damage at all. This is simply a mechanic to make sure that the player understands that different tools have different roles in the game. But for now, all the tools that behave similarly, they just have different base damage, but otherwise they all work the same way. And that is it for today. Just a really quick change here to be able to use all the tools in the game. Next time we'll be looking at a UI to make the selection of the tools faster and easier. But that will be it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.